K-Tutorial number 1, Defining Lambda, Lesson 2. We here learn how to include a predefined module, substitution, how to use it to define a K-Rule, the characteristic rule of lambda calculus, and how to make proper use of variables in rules. Let us continue our lambda.k definition started in the previous lesson. The requires keyword takes a .k file containing language features that are needed for the current definition. The predefined features are referred to using their relative path from the k-include folder. Thus, the command require modules substitution .k says that the subsequent definition of lambda needs a generic substitution which is predefined in file modules substitution .k under the folder k-include. Note that substitution is defined itself in k, although it uses features that we have not discussed yet in this tutorial, so it may not be easy to understand now. Using the imports keyword, we can now modify lambda to import the module substitution, which is defined in the required substitution.k file. Now we have all the substitution machinery available for our definition. However, since our substitution is generic, it cannot know which language constructs bind variables. However, this information is critical in order to correctly solve the variable capture problem. Thus, we have to tell the substitution that our lambda construct is meant to be a binder. This is simply done using the attribute binder. Now we are ready to define our first k rule. Rules are introduced with the keyword rule and make use of the right symbol. In our case, the rule defines the so-called lambda calculus beta reduction, which makes use of substitution in its right hand side. By convention, variables that appear in rules start with a capital letter. The current implementation of the K-Tool may even enforce that. Variables may be explicitly tagged with their syntactic category, a so-called sort. If tagged, the matching term will be checked at runtime for membership to the claim sort. If not tagged, then no check will be made. The former is safer, but involves the generation of a side condition to the rule, so the resulting definition may execute slightly slower overall. In our rule in lambda.k, we tagged all variables with their sorts, so we chose the safest path. Only the v variable really needs to be tagged there, because we can prove, using other means not a k tool, as the k tool is not concerned with proving, that the first two variables will always have the claimed sorts whenever we execute any expression that parses with our original grammar. Let us compile the definition and then run some programs. First, you will notice that a new cell has been automatically added to the default configuration. For example, krun close variable capture dot lambda is the shown output. The new cell next ID has been added by the substitution to keep track of the fresh variables that it needs to generate in order to avoid variable capture. In our example above, it has already used a fresh identifier, id0, and thus the counter has been incremented from 0 to 1. Second, you will notice that only certain programs reduce, some even yield non-termination, such as omega.lambda, while others do not reduce. For example, free variable capture dot lambda does not reduce its second argument expression to y, as we would expect. This is because the k-write rules between syntactic terms do not apply anywhere they match. They only apply where they have been given permission to apply by means of appropriate evolution strategies of language constructs, which is done using strictness attributes, evolution contexts, heating cooling rules, and so on, as discussed in the next lessons. The next lesson will show how to add lambda to the desired evolution strategies using strictness attributes.